all my Crimsonites and welcome to the Crimson Cure channel where we embrace our femininity, increase our womanly values, and celebrate our brothers. So join me on our feminine journey to learn, heal, and grow. Hey there, how's everybody doing? Hopefully everyone is fine this Wednesday. Everybody doing okay? Thank you so much for kicking off the contribution HVAC. So let's go. Chat said it's something about the Omale girl and her man dumped her like clockwork. Yeah, we'll talk about that at some point. But thank you so much HVAC for kicking off the contributions. I appreciate you. We may not even be done with Miss Fanny Willis either. I thought that the two-parter that I did was going to be, I thought the two-parter that I did was going to be enough, but the way this seems to be playing out, I don't know. It, I'm, we may have to do more on her because I watched them bring Terrence Bradley back up there to testify. Oh, boy. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you so much. Frederick, for your contribution. I appreciate you. Oh. Thank you so much. Your excellence. And I'm going to have to catch the replay. Always here to show you how much we appreciate you. Appreciate you as well. Thank you so much. The way they, the way they. The way they triangulated that man on that witness stand, it was just ought to, ought to been against the law. See, now I understand why they are doing the questioning that they do the way that they do. See, at first I thought they was fumbling and bumbling, but a lady do be kind of fumbling and bumbling. Let's just be honest. I forgot her name. The lady that be, that's on uh on the Trump's defense and stuff like that. And she had on the same outfit that she had on when she was trying to question Fanny, baby. You got to change your suit coat or something, baby. Change your blazer. Baby, they got sheen blazers. They don't cost but about, what, $10 to $12? Get you a bunch of sheen blazers. Ashley Merchant, right, right. Get the get she got on that same blazer with that little navy blue skirt and them little blocky heels. Mm -mm. Now, they object to her every other question. They objects to her before she get done with the question po thing. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. That's who dragged him for filth on that witness stand. But we're not going to talk about that right now. Yeah, she had on them same clothes for when did Fanny do that testifying? About a week ago. You can't come in there with that same skirt. Thank you so much, Steve, for your contribution. I appreciate you so much. And Steve is a new sponsor of the show. And thank 
Thank you so much, Kendrails, and my donations to Crimson University. Keep it cooking. I will. And thank you so much. I appreciate you. Appreciate you, Steve and Kendrell, being the co-sponsors of the show so far. Um, please hit the like button, share the video to everywhere that you share videos. Please go ahead and click the subscribe button because as we go on, I'm going to go ahead and make it subscriber only. Oh, before I get really into it. Sometimes uh, YouTube do that stuff. I don't even understand it. But sometimes YouTube do that. And it make me so mad. Thank you, Miss Nicole. I appreciate you. Because that's what I was looking for. Okay. So let's go ahead and get on into what I want to... Okay, so first of all, I need to shout out Pink Book Lessons. Pink Book Lessons has been standing on Tiffany Henger's head for months, okay? She's been standing on her back feet for months. So I would be remiss to do a live stream saying anything about Tiffany Henger without giving much props to Pink Book Lessons and her extensive coverage on all of the foolish mint and antics that Tiffany Henyard has been up to since she was elected as mayor of Dalton. Now, because Pink Book did such a great job of going into the details of all of the foolishness, I'm not gonna come at it from that way. We're gonna come at it from another way because the way in which the foolishness has been piling up has given me a very good, uh, like lens to see Miss Tiffany Tahoe as Pink Book call her Tiffany Ta Teflon Tiff. Pink Book got so many names for that girl is 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 absolutely ridiculous. Let me straighten something up. Dalton is not considered Chicago. Dalton is a south suburb. All of the different suburbs have their own mayors. Okay. And they are not considered Chicago. Chicago is Chicago. Cook County is Chicago. Only. So all them south suburbs, all them west suburbs, all them uh, up north, all that. That is not Chicago. Oak Park, not Chicago. Dalton, not Chicago. South Holland, not Chicago. Flossmoor, not Chicago. Maywood, not Chicago. Oakwood, not Chicago. Oak Brook, not Chicago. North Brook, not Chicago. Melrose, not Chicago. Okay. Schomburg, not Chicago. Harvey, not Chicago. Thornton, not Chicago. Calumet. Not Chicago. Right? Joliet, none of that is Chicago. Chicago is Chicago. All of that other stuff is the suburbs. I don't care how close it is to the city. Thank you, love. See, not even Cicero. Cicero, not Chicago. When you cross Sir Mac, 
Okay. When you are, are, are at the intersection of Cicero and Cermak and you go and you cross west, cross Cicero, going further west at Cicero and Cermak, you are in Cicero. That is not Chicago. No, no. That is not Chicago. No, 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 sir. No, ma'am. No, sir, no, ma'am. I don't care how close it is. North Riverside, not Chicago. None of that. None of it. None of it. None of it. It's a whole different township. Hold it. Yeah. When you go to that Walgreens, that is Cicero. You are not in Chicago, beloved. They got their own police and everything. Now, now that we got that straight. Tiffany Teflon Henyard. Is everything wrong with not only the boss chick city girl mentality, she encapsulates and represent how she's moving, how she's been moving in a position of leadership is everything wrong with black female leadership and what she represents, how she moves, how she thinks she's supposed to move, the delusion about what leadership means and what it doesn't mean is why the black community is in the shape it's in. Because hyenas have been leading the black community with this same mindset. Let me open up with that. Let me open. I'm just going to hit you with what you know is coming. Everything that she do exemplifies why black females females in general black ones specifically should never be in leadership positions and the reason why i'm pointing out black women specifically is because we're just about the only community or what's left of a community whose women have been in the driver's seat for like 70 years now All of her antics from driving up Dalton's debt to seven million and counting. This is the debt that she has put. Dalton is a poor su South suburb that is 99% black. Dalton suburb is not a wealthy suburb. It is a poor South suburb of Chicago, for those of you who do not know. And it is 99% black. Working class and and uh, working poor, working class and working poor are in Dalton. OK, and I'm not trying to throw shade to them. This is a poor township suburb for her to go over there. And run roughshod over what would be considered her own people is exactly what black women in the leadership in the de facto leadership of the community have done to the community this is why we in the problems that we in this is why we're in the shambles that we in this is why we're on the brink of extinction as a community at, at, to the point where People kind of laugh. We kind of laugh when we refer to us as a community because of the fact that we're in such shambles that we're about to be extinct as, as you think of a community to be. Moving hand in hand with the, the white supremacist power structure that is in place and ingrained in the environment, 
in the institutions. You got goofy Negroes, hyenas and guyenas that want to get on under pink book lessons videos and talk about why are you attacking a black woman? All this foolishness. And the reason why that they're saying it is because they're oblivious to reality. All that they see is a woman in a, in a political position of just a little bit of power. She's not even the mayor of Chicago. She's the mayor of a township. You understand? And she is, I believe, the, uh, I forgot what title she hold for Thornton, which is another small township. All they see and all that they can say is, well, she's doing what white people do exactly. Exactly. She doing what the white power structure taught her how to do. Take advantage of poor and working poor black people. That's, that's what she's doing. And that is what black women collectively have been doing to the, commu the community as it were. See, somebody said it, that they think she's a plant. I actually disagree with you, Melvin. And I'm going to explain to you why I disagree with you, beloved. Because they don't got to put a battery in these hyenas' backs no more. This is just what they think. This is just how they operate. They've been operating on autopilot for about 70 going on 80 years now. They just don't care that she's there. See, and there's a difference. They wouldn't waste time to plant her. They just don't care that she's there. They don't care what she's doing. Because she's doing it to her own. She's doing it to black people. They don't care enough about it to really truly put a stop. To come down hard on the hammer with her. They don't care. Because who's suffering underneath her? Black poor people. That's who's suffering underneath her. People who need government assistance, people whose jobs are not, are barely paying uh, 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 minimum wage, people who barely can make ends meet and things of that nature. To take advantage of these, of the very same people that we, that we collectively are sit here and say the institution take advantage of us. And don't want to see us rise. We're mad at the immigration because what is the immigrant class doing? Taking our spot at the bottom. They taking our spot at the bottom. That's the purpose of letting them in here. And it's not like we're rising in status and leaving the bottom vacant so that another group of people can serve at the bottom. We're being pushed out of the bottom out of existence. That's the problem. We're being pushed out of existence. We're not being, we didn't move up and then now there's a vacant space and nature abhors a vacuum. So put the immigrants in our, in our old space. No, 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 no. We're just being overtaken and then obliterated. And I don't know why don't nobody see that. So, so this is just almost like cleanup duty. Just get rid of Negroes all together. Just get rid of them. Because what's going to happen with the immigrants that are coming from Mexico and all of this type of stuff are eventually going to be given whitehood. 
Do you understand that? They're eventually going to be given whitehood. They're going to be given the status of white. And once the road to white whiteness is open to them, we really going to be done. We will never have that role open to us because it is specifically. But we're not going to go too far into that problem. The only reason I mention that problem is because this ties into them not caring about her running roughshod over her own. Then you got folks congratulating her. This woman has, like I said, seven million plus dollars in debt for Dalton. She has done things like retaliate against people's businesses, black people, black men more prominently and black women she's gone against as well who didn't quote unquote support her or praise her or uplift her like she thought or felt that they should worship her. She harassed black owned businesses in her own township. The, the businesses in your township is what bring money to your township. Did, why do you think towns and suburbs and big cities and stuff like that try to get businesses to come to them? Because that's revenue for them. Why do you think so many malls and stores and plazas and shopping centers be open in suburbs? Why? Because those things bring revenue to the suburb. It, 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 it bolsters employment. You know what I'm saying? People will come from out of the city to come to the suburb, to this particular store, this particular shopping center and things of that nature. They want people to spend money. So it's either going to be shopping or something like that, or there's going to be some tourist thing or some attraction. Nobody would go to Gurney if Great America wasn't there. Six Flags Great America. Nobody would go to Gurney, Illinois. Nobody, not a single soul. Nobody, not a single soul would come from the all the way from Chicago or from Milwaukee or the surrounding cities to come to six to come to Gurney, Illinois, if Six Flags Great America wasn't over there. That's how they make their money. That's how they make their money. That's how Gurney, as a little small town, stay afloat. All the money that it generate all through the summer from Great America and Gurney Mills, which is their shopping center, their mall over there. That's it. That's it. Ain't nothing else over in Gurney but residents. That's all. It's out in the boonies and everything. So I'm saying that to say when you are running, a, it, the, the, the dynamic is the same, big or small. This is why Gary is suffering. Gary, Indiana suffered because there is no business there. No attraction. The steel mill, which is why Gary was even built, is run down. That's not bringing the revenue that it did all them years ago. Do you understand? Tiffany Hinyard has been elected as mayor and she has zero concept. Not only does she have zero concept of how to manage a township or city, she doesn't care to manage it properly.
She has the audacity to harass, to shut down, to create obstacles for black businesses to thrive in, a, in an economy that business that certain businesses are struggling in, depending on what kind of business it is. People have put their, listen, let me put something into perspective for you. We are black. It is difficult enough for us to create a successful business. A successful business is one that pays for itself and pays us. Do you understand that the failure rate of businesses across the board, no matter who owns them, is like 50% or more? And typically businesses fail between in the first three to five years, they fail. And it's not because the people don't know their craft or don't know, you know what I'm saying? It's usually it fail because of money, lack of capital, things of that nature. People are running their own businesses. So they are, if you, if you think about it in terms of the cash flow quadrant, these are self-employed people. That's more hours than an employed person. A person is working for another company. When you work for yourself, there are no hours. There is no off time. There is no quit. So all of it is you. All of the business depend upon you. People have taken out loans. It's hard enough for black people to get this stuff. People have taken out loans. People have put their life savings and all of those things, all of the money, all of the money that they have into creation of business just for you and your hair hat to come shut it off because they didn't vote for you or because you might you heard that they might have said something to you or they came to the town hall meeting to voice concerns as citizens in that township about how you're running it like a boneyard and so to retaliate against them you want to destroy their whole life by destroying their business A complete ruin to them people. Your people, supposedly. This is how you know that black women collectively have always sold us out as a group. The biggest sellouts. They've always sold us to the white man. They've always thrown us in the meat grinder and smiled on their way to the bank. They've always been paid to throw us directly under the first two wheels of the bus. That's the definition of a sellout. And she cheesing all the way to the bank. She's using these people's taxpayers' money and all of that type of stuff as a personal ATM how you lease a Tahoe for one hundred and fifty thousand dollars? That is a Chevy, and no shade to Chevy. But at least if you're gonna spend one hundred and fifty five y'all on a car, you can't get you a S class Benz or something. You went and got a Chevy Tahoe? How you ain't even spending the money right? How you fumble spending the mismanage? How you fumble a fumble? How you fumble the mismanage of the money? So if you're going to do it, go ahead and do it. That's how you poverty in here. Because you thought a Chevy Tahoe was the bee's knees. For you to steal taxpayer money to lease on way higher of a lease than you ever needed to get it. A Chevy Tahoe. Again, I'm not throwing shade on Chevy Tahoes. I'm, I'm really not. Chevy has always been a good brand of car. I ain't, I ain't got nothing against a heavy Chevy. Them Malibus is cute and them little Impalas is cute and stuff like that. I ain't got nothing against a Chevy. But come on. You stole the money to go buy a Chevy.
Cause when I when I heard I said when I heard Pink Book say it was a Chevy Tahoe, I said Chevy Tahoe. How much is a brand new? Let me let me go to Chevy.com. We gonna take a look. We gonna Chevy. Dot com. We gonna go to Chevy. Chevy. Okay. We gonna a new a twenty twenty five. Tahoe, no, let's just get the one that they got just sitting here. Just just sitting here. I got to share the screen because it, it, it just ain't no way. Uh, let's look at this here. This is a Chevy Tahoe. Now, like I said, ain't nothing wrong with this car. There's nothing wrong. This is a 2024. There's nothing wrong with this car, right? The starting price is 56 too. 56. $56,200. That's the starting. That's your basic 2024 Chevy Tahoe. Okay, let's let's soup it up. I want to soup it up. We going to soup it up. Whatever. We going to soup it up. Four wheel drive. All right, here we go. All right, let let high country. Let this the highs of the biggest one they got. That's only eighty one. Is y'all seeing this? High country. All right. Here we go. That go ahead and get the one with the V with the V8 in there. That's 8180. I mean, I know that's not with the taxes and everything, but come on now. We're going with the standard. Okay. Let's let's go. We're gonna do the wheels. We just gonna get, you know, they all it's already on 22s. Let's get the let's get these. They already on 22s. All right, next thing, you know, they got this. All right. Next, next go ahead. We gonna go ahead and get let's go ahead and get the high country. Go ahead and get the deluxe. We're gonna do it big. This is fine. I don't need nothing more. Next. Uh, if you want, listen. 89, you still under 100,000? This is under 100,000. You under... Lord have mercy. You're under a hundred thousand. Souped up, a souped up Tahoe with the with the best package, the highest package that you the biggest one you get. We just went through the biggest one you got. I know it's the, just the purchase price. You know, it's taxes and all that kind of stuff, but it is up to 150000 I doubt it.
You know what? Let me take a break and then we're going to talk about all the various different ways that her her failure and her leadership is reflective of the failure of having put black women in a leadership position and we know who put them there. But after these messages, we'll be right back because I need everybody to go to ashkicking.com. The link is at the top of the chat because I know that you are looking to keep your skin looking and feeling and smelling its absolute best. This is some of the best body butter that I have ever used. And this is coming from a person that know how to make body butter. Do you understand what I'm saying? And if for whatever reason, this is your first time getting an order, then I don't know what you're waiting on, but you definitely can get a 10% discount using a promo code CRIMSON while hitting the link at the top of the chat once again at ashkicking.com. They not only have body butter, not only is the packaging awesome, not only is the quality of the products awesome, you will not be disappointed. They have so much body care items. They have deodorant, they have facial moisturizers, they even have incense and things of that nature to give your home a good vibe and a good smell. So you definitely want to go to ashkicking.com and pick up your order today. I don't know how many likes I need, but I owe y'all a bam, 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 bam. You got to hit the like button, bam, bam. You got to uh, 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 uh. go ahead and hit the like button for me if you can. Um. I want to ask one of my mods to see if you can put us on subscriber only mode, please. And let me know when it's done because I can't see it from this screen. Now, here is some of the problem. We're going to go through some of the issue here. We're going to show one. Then we're going to show the other. This is this hyena. This is how she presents herself at these town meetings, at the meetings with the boards of trustees. The, the board of trustees are the people who are there to provide checks and balances to whoever the mayor is, to make sure that the funds are not being mishandled, to make sure that the position in general is not being mishandled, to make sure that there's no tyranny, to make sure that there is no over injustice. They're supposed to be the check and the balance, but black women do not, they don't want checks. And this is how they maneuver around being held accountable. Because when, when there is a check and a balance, they do whatever is in their power and they employ the institution behind them to silence the other members of the community that would have checked it, that would have put it back in order and had us not at the brink, the very precipice of extinction. false narratives out there and y'all should be ashamed of y'all stuff. Y'all black. Y'all are black. And y'all sitting up here beating and attacking on a black woman that's in power. Y'all should be ashamed of y'all selves. All the stuff that y'all did to get people to come to our community to just diss and down our community. Shame on y'all. 
Because when I want to attack and take any of y'all seats, I run. I run for the seat. I don't do smear campaigns. I don't do all this mess. It's nonsense. Because at the end of the day, we still got to live in this village. Oh, well, well, y'all don't live in the village, but we still got to live in the village. Because y'all got false narratives out there, and y'all should be shut. Hear this foolishness? Do you hear this hyena? Do you hear this hyena? Using the black card like a true sellout. This is how they get away or try to get away from accountability. That's why I don't listen to these hyenas when they start talking about being black. I don't listen to that. I don't listen to that because you don't care nothing about being black. This is, this is hyena babble. This is high power hyena babble. You don't care anything about the so-called community that you are trying. This is sign language at its best. Shaming, insulting, guilting the need to be right because she's wrong. Now she want to have an attitude because of how, the people that she's wronging is reacting to how she's wronging them. Now they're wrong. Is this not how hyenas act? Is this not the collective of hyenas and uh, of our community? This is why they don't like the Manosphere. This is why they didn't like Kevin Samuels. Because it was a response to the foolishness that they do. The way they wrong the men of the community, the way they wrong the children of the community, the way they try to destroy other women of the community. And when these elements of the community come out and say, hey, this is what you're doing. We don't like what you're doing. Let, you know, why, why would you screw me over? Now when you get upset, now shame on you. When the men don't like what the hyenas do, all oh, y'all sassy. Y'all arguing with women all day. Somebody need to take these podcast microphones away because all y'all do is argue with women. We need to get rid of, you know, this division between black men and black women. We'll get rid of it when you stop selling us out. That's when we'll stop. When you stop being the main house Negro mammy gatekeeper, that's when we'll stop. We'll stop then. We'll stop then. And not before. We not just going to stop talking about what y'all do. Y'all ain't stopped then doing it yet. So why would we stop talking about it? All this, you know, it's just on social media. Y'all need to go outside because women don't really do this stuff in real life. Yes, y'all do. Tiffany Henry is in real life. She's not keyboard worrying her this on YouTube. This is not a skit she doing for YouTube or for Instagram or for TikTok. She ruining these people's lives in real time. She jeopardizing people's businesses in real time. She retaliating against people's businesses in real time. She stealing taxpayer money in real time. Taking trips to Vegas. Taking she can't just accept her annual salary for her position which is more than enough money to live how you want to live just live off your salary ain't nobody saying you can't live well you make enough money to live fine just fine more than most people but you're greedy you can't leave well enough alone you gotta gut your own community have they not gutted the community because they believe that leadership means they get served. These hyenas believe that leadership means you serve them. That you worship them.
Y'all attacking a black woman. He need to pull that right out of the car with a straight face. We go. We go. We gonna. We, what's the essence of leadership? What's the essence of leadership? What's the one thing that a leader is constantly doing? Do anybody know? Cause this hyena don't know. The essence of leadership. Thank you. The essence of leadership is service. Every leader, every, every leader that's worth something, every leader that is worth their leadership position is serving the people that they lead. Does a leader not give their time? Does a leader not give they mental power, they energy, they wisdom, any knowledge, any resources, whether those resources are concrete or abstract, whether that's money or whatever the resource is, knowledge, whatever the resource is. Are leaders not constantly called? Is there a time where a leader is not being called upon? To solve this problem, solve that problem, do this, do that. Is it, is, it, is it ever a time? Is it ever an off day for a leader? No. They are always in service. This is why followership is so important to leadership. Because the leader inspires the follower, but the follower got to want to follow. And good followership inspires the leader to continue to lead. Because it is a great sacrifice in order to lead. It is not only a dictator thinks. This is, this is, this is how tyrants are made. This is where tyrants come from. This is the difference between a good leader and a tyrant. Because tyrants think that it's time to lord things over people and that they cannot have accountability. Who, who was to hold the tyrant accountable? Every time somebody opposed the tyrant or challenged them on a tyrannical position or tried to hold them accountable, they get rid of them. And surround themselves with yes men. This is how you know a, a tyrant. Because they don't want to be held accountable by the people, the very people that is directly affected for everything, everything that they do. A good leader is always accountable for what they do. They don't want yes men. They want people around them that is going to check them, that is going to bring things to their attention. Hey, you know, this is not correct. You might have to think about that again. And a good leader takes advisement. Good leaders take righteous advice and counsel. To make sure, because a good leader want to make sure that they did right in the position of leadership. One of the other, one of the other qualities that I have observed in some of the best leaders is leader. The some of the best leaders do not want that position. That's why it's a sacrifice to be in it. Some of the best leaders. Do not look for that position. Other people put them in that position. They don't want to be there. They don't strive and look for it. They don't step on other people to get there. Most good leaders that you find are the ones that never wanted that position in the first place. 
So this is why they become so meticulous about, do, am I doing it properly? Is it righteous? Is it good? Is my leadership on point? Other people got to advise me, listen, because leaders have it hard. It is not some thing where you kick back and twiddle, twiddle your toe like hyenas think it is. Because there is no leadership without accountability. Because the leader is the one, if it, if it succeeds, they going to get praise. And if it fail, they going to get dog piled on about it. So they have to have accountability. Leadership without accountability is tyranny. And have not black women been running a, 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 a tyrannical gynocracy over the black community? Have they not? Can't be checked. Who going to check me, boo? Is that not the mantra? Is that not the mantra? They have, hyenas have a child's understanding of leadership. I get to just tell people what to do. That is not all that encompasses leadership because telling people what to do or being the one that has the last say in decision making, it all it's all on you. It's got to go, it's got to pan out. That go for anybody in a position of leadership. Whether you're talking about a mother in leadership over her children, a husband in leadership over his wife and family, a man in leadership over his business, a military officer in leadership over, you know, his regime, his uh, uh, platoon or whatever you want to call it. I don't know the names. Y'all know what it is. A president over a country, a mayor over a city. Hmm. The decisions that you make, they got to pan out because you the last say so. The decision rests on you. The outcome rests on you. That's why accountability is critical to leadership, which is why women should not be in no leadership position of any importance because women don't like accountability. Women want to do whatever they want to do and nobody say nothing to them about it. Whole meltdowns if you say she wrong. Whole meltdown. If you just if you just correct her a little bit, whole meltdown. A woman to have a whole meltdown. It, 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 am I lying? She did. She we just watched her have a meltdown. Why did she just have that meltdown? Cause somebody held her accountable. That's why she don't like them little meetings. Cause somebody gets up and hold her accountable. Why did you spend that money? Why is when we look in the my view where that where the trustees is supposed to be able to look at the bank statements and look at the you know all the money being spent and managed? She locked them out of that so they couldn't hold her accountable to that. So she could steal in peace. When you talk to black women about the single motherhood rate and why do y'all allow yourselves to be impregnated by these men that you don't have no one night stand, you knew them for a couple of weeks, or this, that, and the third, they don't like accountability. So they get to talking about, well, you know, that's the man's fault. He need, he gave us the sperm. If he wouldn't uh, gave us the sperm, would be no baby. Ain't nobody talking about all that. Your womb is inside of you. Your vagina is attached to you. You. And I'll be doggone the bell if I ain't going to try to protect mine. It's mine.
if the single motherhood is so hard and you the one that's got to deal with everything, do you seem like you'd be a little more careful about that now, wouldn't it? Huh? And then when you say that to them, y'all kind of mammies and, and me and our misandrists, I mean, they misogynists and, you know, you hate, you're dragging black women and you hate black women when you, when you call accountability out. Couldn't stand Kevin Samuel celebrated that man whole death all because his channel was about female accountability. They, they starting to hate and turn on Kendra G cause she do it now. Kendra G taking somebody notes somewhere because Kendra G got her little man. Hmm. Kendra G said, no, I'm going to go on here and try to get me a little man. I'm rooting for her. I'm rooting for Kendra. I'm rooting for you, Kendra. Hopefully you able to maintain that relationship and, and y'all get married and stay married. them all she posted them on social media and you know it's not his thing she ain't constantly doing it which is why some people is you know um a little bit surprised by that but um but yeah she she yeah she's in a relationship hopefully she has learned enough about how to conduct herself in a relationship. I hope she did. I hope she did. Was anybody able to, is this on subscriber mode? Was y'all able to do that? Put a one in the chat if it's on subscriber mode. Okay, good. I'll just check and make sure. Like I said, Tiffany Hinger is looking to serve herself and not the community that she is leading. She's retaliating against any and all who don't support her, who don't kiss her butt, praise or uplift her. She wants upliftment. Upliftment is let me do what I want to do without interference from you, without being held accountable. And if you try to hold me accountable, that's, that's bashing me. 
Same thing. She's running Dalton like single mothers run their household without a man. In complete chaos. Posting up like she living a life she don't live. Using other people's money, talking about she's super male and she's doing all of this good and doing all of this and doing all of that. And she's not. She ruining those people. A black woman in power. I guess that's why she was running around here looking like Nino Brown. Is that why she run around here dressed like Nino Brown off New Jack City? Said Dalton, Illinois, Mayor Tiffany Henyard is being accused by residents of dressing like a TV gangster, blowing thousands on lavish lifestyle and vacations, using cops to harass alleged enemies, and shutting down local businesses that won't donate to her campaign. Henyard was first elected in 2021 and describes herself as super mayor of the village of Dalton, which is 20 miles south of downtown Chicago. It has about 20,000 residents. Currently, the 40-year-old is being compared to an overseas dictator by her aggrieved residents. They claim she's been putting up massive billboards with her face all across town and militarizing local police as her personal bodyguard and backup dancers and mu music videos and using them against her political enemies. She's also been accused of spending thousands in public funds on lavish vacations and restaurants, hiring DJs for town hall meetings, and all while the village falls into a five million is seven now ditch of debt. She's even been accused of having a DJ blast Rihanna's Be Better Have My Money as she sashayed into a meeting to make a point. But according to Henry's bold and plentiful signs, she's simply keeping her promises, fighting for her residence. Dalton trustee Kiana Belcher has claimed that former Dalton chief of police Robert Collins, who was reportedly fired by Henyard last year and is suing the town for wrongful termination, admitted that Henyard forced him to target people. Belcher says she'll have the police follow you and give tickets. I went out of town and she had one of the officers give me tickets. It was a manipulation tactic. Belcher confronted Collins and he allegedly said she told me to write them. Belcher also claimed the village is facing a million dollars in bills from Henyard allegedly paying overtime to cops serving as her personal bodyguards, which reportedly began in 2021 over a fatal police-involved incident. Stop talking negative about our people. I mean, she's just doing what her white counterpart's been doing since government been government. Do your thing, Nino. Look at her. She is Nino Brown. Look at her with the hat on. How you got a leather tam hat on? Ran an unsuccessful burger joint before getting into politics. So she couldn't run a burger joint properly. 40 years old with this foolishness. In order to cover the debt that she was creating, she was charging the, the residents like $500. For parking tickets. Small parking violations. Things that should cost no more than $30, 50 at best. $500 if they wanted the tickets cleared up. And then they spoke against that. A whole sellout. She's, she is everything wrong with the community. She represents everything wrong with it. 
older, single, chaotic, a sellout, hate black people, undereducated, loud and wrong, masculine, foul mouth, foul tempered, allows her emotions to make all of the decisions for her. No remorse, no self-reflection, no self-improvement, integrity, bad, a thief, a liar. Can't lead her way out of a wet paper bag. But she bow down to Massa so that they can put her and others like her in these positions, these gatekeeping positions. Anywhere from being the mayor of a large city to the mayor of a township to being HR at a corporation. Middle management at a store. sold black men out in order to allow Uncle Sam to be the husband and the father in the house. The children belong to the state. This is why she can take the father of her children through the ringer because he's not the daddy. He doesn't have authority or, or any type of uh, uh, any type of anything over them children. He just donated his sperm. That's why they so. That's why they so comfortable telling me and they sperm donors. Cause he ain't never gonna be the daddy, even if he biologically the father. State is the daddy. She run to the state every time the man make her mad. Try to put him in jail. Try to get his wages garnished. Try to do all this other stuff. Even if he's just a working class man, he don't have all this whole bunch of money. It ain't just rich men going through the court system. It's your average everyday man going through the court system. He can't hardly live off the, off the paycheck that he make because she keep going to the court trying to get an increase in the child support. And if he don't pay, she call the police. If he don't bring the kid back at 459 on the dot and I'm supposed to drop him off at 5, she got the police ready. Talking about he, he, uh, she don't know where her kid's at. And anytime black men have come to correct and say, no, we need to get this back on track. Now she don't want no accountability. Women like Auntie Shahrazad Ali asked a simple question more than 30 years ago. Okay, you don't want to take 100% of the blame of what's going on in the community and rightfully so it's not a hundred percent black women's fault but what percentage of the blame are you willing to take and they still have not answered that question to this day she asked that question in 88 89 and in 2024 there's still no answer crickets crickets what percentage of the blame are you willing to take if not a hundred, okay, not a hundred. We got that part. Anytime Auntie Iyanla go live or show up anywhere, they call her all kind of mammies and pick me's. And I've said this before and I'll say it again. She lightweight on them. 
she holds some accountability to him, but she don't she don't nearly talk about him the way I do. She try to talk to him with some kind of love and you know what I'm saying, sisterly, auntie, motherly, uh, maternal advice, and they don't like that either. And this is this is why we're on the edge of extinction. Because the white man put her in a position of de facto leadership. She has seen the black community swirl down the toilet. And she don't care. Because she think he going to come save her. And he won't. She going to swirl down with him. Keep telling y'all, y'all not Mrs. Cartwright. Fanny Willis is learning she's not Mrs. Cartwright either. You the DA of Fulton County, good for you. You just went after a rich white man. I don't care what you thought he did. They sent you a lap dog. Why they ain't send no white woman? Why they ain't send no another white man at him? No, they sent... They sent their lap dog. Sick them, girl. Get them, girl. I guess you wasn't getting them fast enough. I don't know what the problem was. But they, but Zaddy showed them step back and, and letting Trump eat you. Letting Trump defense and lawyers eat you alive. Had your boy on the stand sweating. Had you up there, you gonna twist down in your backwards dressing, testify on the stand, and ain't nobody told you to do that. Matter of fact, they didn't even want you to get up there on the stand. You didn't have to get up there and say nothing, but you got to be loud and wrong. You got to let everybody know you D.A. Fanny Willis. Okay, and you got up there and made a fool out yourself in more ways than one. You ain't Mrs. Cartwright either. Because they'll use you to get him and then break you at the same time, which is what it looked like was happening. Got you and Nathan Wade up there. Got your phone records and everything. Double back and had Bradley up there again and caught him in so many lies. It was just ridiculous. He just had to put his head down. Squinting into the distance ain't going to make it go away. And study sitting up there talking about how you don't remember nothing don't make it go away either. You they little attack dog. You attacks all of the rappers and this and that. Now I don't I don't follow those cases. So I don't know how culpable or guilty those men are in these Rico cases. Like I said, I don't follow them. I don't even really know what the Rico cases is really about. That's why I don't speak on them. But I wonder how many black men have you thrown in, in the meat grinder? And then they sent you, they sent you after old Trump. Pumped your head up. Yeah, you Mrs. Cartwright, we love you. We got your back. Go on here, get him, girl. We got you. We behind you. Way, yeah, way behind me. So, so far behind me, I can't, when I turn around, I can't see you.
They use you to block and create an obstacle and be a, a stumbling block for the whole entire community. You, you handicap your boys so that they can be the sassy men that y'all talk about online. You, 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 you make your girl so masculine. You don't tell them about the life you live. You don't tell them how lonely it is. You got Tiffany Haddish somewhere crying about how she ain't got no man. She going to head it all the way to Israel. Girl, that ain't none of your business. Mind the business that pay you. What you going over there to learn about that conflict? What you going to do about it? Huh? When you get over there and figure out what's going on, if you figure out what's going on, then what? You you ought to have recused yourself and I ain't going after that white man. I'm talking about Fanny and Trump again. Because who's talking about Trump's case now? Who talking about whether he's guilty or not? And who 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 talking about that? Not not many people. Got y'all twisted up and connected. Now everybody talking about you and your hearing about how you need to be disqualified. See how they do? Hmm. You thought just because Trump stand up there and smile and say goofy stuff and, and you know, try to spray their hair back on and all that kind of stuff and sit up there and do one of these numbers. You, you At the end of the day, that is a rich old white man in this country. Trump been in so many court cases and litigation and been sued so many times. Okay? He almost can be a lawyer's dang on self. He stay in a courtroom somewhere fighting a case. Now he done pulled the skeletons out your closet. Any other time, it might not even that been that big of a deal. He didn't make it a big old deal now. And you play right into his hands. You sashayed over there. Um, uh, uh. And you lied on me. Girl, if you don't go back upstairs and sit down. And, and go in the bathroom and put your dress on right. And have one of your paralegals to help you zip it in the back. Girl, if you don't, if you don't comb that gel out the front of your head, cover that track bed in that girl, go sit down. Anyway, thank you, Damien said. Oh, I think, I think that I see these. Thank you, Damien said. Hey, what's uh, what's up, good sis? Love the new background. Thank you, HVAC said. Cam put one on the maggles and little maggles. I seen that. Listen, getting hemmed up by a man. In a in a hat he got out of Hogwarts is nasty work. I don't know why they tried him. I do not know why they tried that man like that. Um, thank you, Damien, for your contribution. Thank you, Amun. Said peace and blessings, love in the background. 
Thank you for all you do. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, Frederick. Said so with the new breed of chaos, we must call them Harachatang hyenas. <laughs> Thank you again, Damien. Says she also just started a podcast on Spotify. Oh Lord. Um, thank you, Chris. Says she isn't a plant. She's a result of us playing identity politics instead of looking at who we put into positions of authority. I agree with that. Thank you, Miss Love. C said a biocultural event that made it possible for Tiff Tiff to exist already took place. She's just operating in her purpose now. Exactly. Thank you, Miss Lou Casey. Hey, how you doing, sweetheart? For the super sticker. Thank you again, HVAC. So this also while uh, Andalusa, Alabama, four hours from hometown of West End, suffered in the 70s and still to this day, all the trades like the steel mill left. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bureau, said Dalton, the town Tiffany here, you're destroyed. Exactly. Thank you, Black Male Spirituality, said Preach, abusing authority against her own people. Thank you, Ramel, for the contribution. Thank you, Mark. So how does one airball and alley you? <laughs> right. Thank you, Jimmy, for your super stick. Appreciate you. Thank you, Well Beast. I'm confused since even though the man don't care about the people she is messing over, their hands will be tied and they will eventually have to get her. She's black. They will hammer her. Don't she know that? Two birds and one stone. Exactly. They don't, they don't be understanding that they be in the line of fire, too. Thank you so much, HVAC. So as an HVAC guy, being a leader is just that, mentoring other techs, and it's never any days off. Thank you, Mark. Said so when all is said and done, I would bet she will appear on Love after lockup. Thank you, Professor Carl. So the gynocracy is just as corrupt as these economic hitmen and puppet regimes in developing countries. They have poor character and it's fully exposed in the spotlight of leadership. Thank you once again, HVAC. So Emperor Palpatine was a prime tyrant. Exactly. Thank you, Kevin, said the tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. The white man knows and shows he understands this. I want black people to think about what this really means. Exa yes. Thank you again, HVAC, SYSBM and Passports. Dennis Perlin already done give us Average Joe, one of several solutions. And once again, said we play chess, Zaddy plays checkers, checkmate, Fanny and Tiffany, buck dancing at its finest. Exactly. So, oh, by the way, those were grown men that Cam was uh, tossing around. Those was not children. The cash apps. Thank you, Miss Bella. Those were not kids. He he wasn't manhandling no kids like that. Them was grown men, and didn't and they didn't have no business. Leave him alone. This is why folks don't like to come back to the hood and do nothing. Because I got I got to do a program in the hood, come back, and then I got to be somebody put their hands on me. Thank you, AD, for the cash app. I appreciate you. And Miss Bella, thank you, sweetheart. I appreciate you as well for your contribution. I appreciate everybody's contribution. Go ahead, jump down in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Like, share, subscribe to the channel if you have not. Once again, I'm your hostess, The Crimson Cure, and this was my perspective. I will see you all on Friday. Bye-bye, Crimsonites.